Hi, welcome to Pen and Brick. In today's episode, I'll be showing you how to make graphic posters with Illustrator and or CAD software. For this intermediate level video, you'll need prime knowledge of Illustrator and or CAD softwares. What's in vogue at the moment are these kind of flat paint, David Hockney slash Andy Burgess type of illustrations. But I know I see them on Instagram all the time. Now with the same technique, you'd actually have a more Keith Haring thick line kind of styled illustration, which I think is sometimes more fitting and expressive. Now, before we jump into it, I'd like to explain the key fundamental differences between using Photoshop and using Illustrator. Photoshop uses a system of rastering, so it's small pixels, and the issue is when you start zooming in, it gets very blurry. Whilst when working in Illustrator, you're working with vectors, so no matter how much you zoom, it will always be clean. I'll be showing three techniques here, where we're drawing straight from Illustrator, from Rhino to Illustrator, and finally modeling from Rhino into Illustrator. Now, when you open the Illustrator, what I would recommend is you have two copies, one where you load the opacity and you can start drawing over. And what you want to try to figure out with these two copies are which are the essential lines and how much detail do you want in your drawing? Trust me, you don't want to start drawing every single brick in a building. What I would recommend is you also start layering when you're in this mode uh, because when you start colouring in you'll have a hard time distinguishing which lines are which. Now I'll talk about colouring at the end of the next section as there will be the exact same drawing. Now, I'm talking about Rhino, but you could really use any CAD program to do this. You could use MicroStation, AutoCAD, etc. But I'll be using Rhino, which is a 3D modeling software, purely because that's what I know best. Similarly to the last section, what you want to do is have two copies and one set to a higher transparency, and then you can start drawing your curves. And again, similar to the other exercise, it's best if you keep your lines on different layers so that when you start working in the colors, the detailing would be easy. Now, the way that you draw, I would recommend is the way that you want to proceed afterwards. So for instance, if you don't really care about the lines, it's okay for them to cross. You don't have to do a cleanup job. Here's the final product. All you want to do is export it into an AI file. AI is for Illustrator. Now, if you are a very precise drawer, which I am not, uh, you won't need this step, but I find it always quite useful to be able to edit again in Illustrator, just because you've got a better control of the curvature of the lines. Now this is the most important step. What you want to do is click Live Paint and then Make. Once that is done, you're able to start colouring. As soon as there's a box that's enclosed, you can put some paint in it. Now, what I was talking about the Keith Haring or Andy Burgess styles is that Illustrator is great in the sense that you can modify every single line at once. Uh, and it gives you the ability to change your aesthetic really quickly. Now this might seem daft, but please don't blindly use the color picker. And that's because you're going to end up with horrible results. For instance, these images are using the wrong set of colors because you're directly using the colors that are on the photo. Here the lightest and darkest colors from the roof. What I would strongly recommend is you really spend more time on choosing what colors would work well. Once again, I'm using Rhino, but you could really use any software you'd like. Uh, SketchUp is definitely the most commonly used and probably the easiest to learn or the most intuitive. And here I'm just designing a house really quickly to show you how you can set up your illustration. Now, one important detail to know is that you do want your modeling to be clean. 
If you get too many lines that go into each other, then you won't have a clean Make 2D, which in the software is how you create your lines. All you need to do is do Make 2D. You can check out the settings if you'd like, but these are good. And once you've done that, you will receive a set of lines. Now, for instance, I modeled quite quickly and there were a couple of errors as items went through other items. So it is necessary to do some drawing. You can do this either in the software that you have or straight in Illustrator. What I would recommend is you can actually test try a lot of these softwares. So for instance, right now, if you'd like, you can have 90 days of free trial on Rhino before you buy the full thing. Once again, same method, you're going to want to export as an AI file. Once in Illustrator, you might need to toggle with the scale a bit, stretch your canvas out. Again, in Illustrator, you can start having fun and you can start adding elements. If I had more time, for instance, I'd start adding characters, I'd start adding fauna and scenery. Right now, I'm just going to do a horizon line. Once again, you're going to want to use the same technique where you live paint and make, and now you can start painting. Once again, because you're not using a photo as a reference, what I would recommend is you start thinking about the light hitting it. And so which walls will actually be impacted by the shadows, which walls will be lighter, and start thinking about the materials that you potentially have, even if very abstract. Now, if you want to change the thickness of some lines and not others, you can double click onto the line and just change it on the stroke panel. Now, this is probably the most interesting step. You're going to want to click recolor artwork to save you a lot of time. So every single shade and every single color you've placed in, you're able to double click and actually change and it will automatically change in the Illustrator. And even if you do jump into Photoshop, I still recommend you get your colors right here and just link your file. Ugly colors to finish on, but you get the idea. And that's it for now. Hopefully, this tutorial has shown you what you can do with your CAD and Illustrator skills to create graphic, beautiful posters. Merci, au revoir, et à la prochaine.